What's going on guys? My name is Hussein and I came out across this interesting article from Uber Engineering Revolutionizing money movement at scale with strong data consistency I like this article a lot. You know why? Because they don't talk about tools they use They talk about the architecture That means they talk about the first principle and uh, it's a common vocabulary that every designer know, and that's I love. They don't throw words like Kafka or, 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 or Prometheus or Kubernetes or, or RabbitMQ or, or Celery or stuff like that. It's they actually show you their clean architecture that you can pick up and deploy yourself if you want to, because that's how engineering should supposed to look like. We don't care about how what tools you use. We can pick our own or we can build our own tools as long as you tell us how your architecture is this. Plain good old diagram. That's it. So how about we jump into it, guys? So money and payment and orders and stuff like that, guys. How how do we how do we debit an account and, and credit another account? For the longest time. I've I'm I'm I'm, I'm a, I have like a little bit strong opinion about this. I used to. I am changing a little bit. It's just the the old dinosaur in me, the old thinking of having a database, a transactional database, and has to be fully acid. And if you want to debit an account, well, you start a transaction, you debit that account, and you credit the other account the same transaction, and then you commit. Why? Because now we have atomicity. That's the asset part, right? And we have isolation. So if someone else is doing the same thing, they will be isolated from our transaction. So they can't look at what we're doing. And we can essentially, based on, 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 on uh, whether you have optimistic concurrency control or pessimistic, you can fail or succeed based on if you, if you don't reconcile. So we, we know how to do this in a single instance database. And I always pushed for this for simplicity reasons and i know a lot of you guys are already working with microservices and they 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 introduce this concept of saga where you break things into multiple sagas like series and you execute things into series and as long as you execute things you have different states you manage the states and you can reach the same consistency eventually by executing the whole sagas Right. This has nothing to do with sagas, but it's very similar because, again, they don't discuss it. They don't care if they use microservices or not. That's the beauty of I love people who write articles like this. It's very generic. It's, 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 if you pick this and went 30 years back into the past and presented this to a computer science professor, they will understand what you want. Right. If you replace this with, I don't know, some Kafka and some celery and some, and some apple and then peaches in the middle and a pineapple tool, I don't know, tools that, uh, that are hip these days, then you're just uh, basically hiding behind these tools. The real engineer will understand how everything works. Yes, I claim that you have to understand every single component that you have in your system otherwise you're working with a black box maybe you're fine with that but personally i like to understand everything within within my own job description obviously right it's like and and within within my interest let's say you cannot understand everything right so you tell me how assembly works and how cpu architecture works i don't know right so it depends your task your your role and to me, that's just people who should take a pride of that. That being out of the way, let's jump into this and see what, what Uber did differently. And you might come back and say, Hussein, this is not something new. People done this for years because, I, I, well, I did not see it. This is the first time I see something like that. All right. So if you have something like that, let me know in the comment section below and we can share knowledge and share uh, experiences. So here's, here's what they want to do. This is the motivation. The motivation is they have these, you know, what Uber is. People, guys, probably everyone knows. Uber is a drive-sharing app. So, well, if you 
you have trips, the concept of trips, and, and you pay a fee for a trip. And then there is, a, so that's one component of it, so the fee of the trip, and that can change. And there is another fee, which is the service fee, I don't know, so Uber's cut, obviously. There is tips, and there is adjustments, and there is so much stuff. So if you want to build an, an, uh, a, a payment system that is so strongly guaranteed, you have to execute this statement in a single transaction, in a single database. But how do you do it if you, ha if you are across the entire loop? You might have a system like FanaDB where they guarantee strong rights across the globe. Postgres had the same concept, by the way, guys, not, not just Fano, right? So you write to an, a primary database and you block that write until all the writes to every single instance in the whole world succeed. If one of them fail, you basically abort the transaction. You can do something like that to achieve if not eventual consistency because you don't want eventual consistency when it comes to money. That's just bad, right? I mean, as long as you, if you know you're, you're consistent at every point and you have a state, you can manage that consistency. That's fine. But if you want a strong consistency, that's how you do it. Spanner works very similar, but they are very way more complicated. They use atomic clocks so that you can they can execute parallel writes and using the time they can reconcile these writes. Because what are the transactions? If you can execute transaction and you can bring all the transaction and order by time, you won, right? The trick is nobody figured out how can they synchronize time across multiple zones. That's a very difficult problem to solve. Google figured it out with this atomic clocks to a millisecond error, I believe. So that's essentially it. So people are trying to solve this problem differently. What Uber data says, okay, I'm not gonna use a sophisticated system like Spanner or, or a very slow write system like Fauna DB, right? Because Fauna DB is it's a it's a slow write. You you have to understand. Once you understand what it does you understand it's a slow ride because it, it guarantees strong guarantees, right? I mean, you can change this. You can relax it a little bit. So, okay, if I write to my primary database and I only three writes to my secondary databases succeed, I can live with that. But if, well, what if someone else read at the same time that that poor schlob database that didn't get the right? What happens when you get and, and made decisions based on, on that knowledge? That could be bad. So let's see what Uber did. Uber said, we're going to break this down into something called the job order based system. Are we recording? Yes, we are. Job order based system. So they created this concept of a job. And think of a job. I read this article, by the way, guys, I'm, I'm going to reference a bit. I'm not reading the article as I speak. I'm just explaining it because I rarely read it. It's a well-written article. I don't have any, any comments uh, except uh, a few. I'm going to mention them in, in, in a few seconds. But, yeah, you can read it for yourself. So the job order concept, think of a job as a trip. Hey, um, I want to go from L.A. to Temecula, right? And in that job, there are many orders, potential orders. For now, we have one order, which is the actual payment that need, needs to happen, right? Which is, and, and within an order, there are entries, order entries. So, so the order of the payment of the trip consists of, here's a, a nice table for the listener of the podcast. I'm going to read it out loud. The order consists of a trip fare right and this order entry literally contains a monetary value so a trip fare of minus 18 dollar for example goes from which account obviously it needs to go from the payer account which is me the rider right so that's minus 18 and then there is a service fee that's an order order entry in the same order in the same job okay that service fee minus two goes off also the payer account you might say, Hussein, why don't they just deduct minus 20? 
No, they want to track Uber's money versus uh, the driver's money, right? So they want to segregate that thing, which is, which is something pretty, once you think about it, these requirements are all driven from high above, right? So now, minus 18, minus 2. So minus 20 go gone from my, my uh, as the rider, right? So now there should be a compensating entries to kind of negate that so you reach this accounting zero. I didn't pay any attention to my accounting 101. I failed all these <laughs> courses, almost failed. I got a B, I think. But I, I hated that idea, right? So like, yeah, so minus 18, minus 20, so there must be a plus 20 somewhere, right? So now there is a third entry called trip fare, but it's plus 18 to whom? To the payee score, escrow, which is the payee account. So that's another order entry in the order object, which is in the job, which is the, the V trip, right? So now, so that's 18 plus 80. And the final one is a service fee goes plus two to Uber, to Uber escrow, which is the Uber account, right? So that's how they do things. Imagine doing this in a single transaction. I mean, you can do it, but what if it fails? You have to do retries, but the idea of having a retry is what? Is it synchronous? You don't want the, 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 the imagine you, you want to do a payment now, right? And it's synchronous, right? When it's synchronous, you have to wait for it to succeed. Who knows? I am debiting my, my paying and it failed. What if I want to retry? Do you sit down and wait in the driver's seat, in, in, the, in the Uber car until it goes through? Oh, let me try again. Oh, it failed. Let me try again. Oh, it failed. No, that won't work, right? Because that's the centralized system. If That's the synchronized, that's the synchronous centralized system. You have to apply, apply, apply. If, if it works from the first time, you're good. But if it failed, someone has to retry. Either it's the client, which is me holding the phone, hitting apply again, hitting pay, or someone in the background that redoes the retrying. And that's another option you can go through. You can just submit a job and does this atomically, right, on the background. That's another solution. There's, I don't see anything wrong with that. But they want a little bit different route. Maybe for a good reason. Okay. So that's essentially the idea. So now Hussein says, like, isn't a job, that's the first question that I got. Isn't a job always have one order? They don't mention this, unfortunately, in the, in the, in the thingy, in the article. But I thought about it and says, hey, what if I want to send a tip? A tip is something you pay after, right? So it's not really in the same order. So it's a different order. So I would imagine that will be one order for the trip will consist of four entries, trip fare minus 18, service fee minus two, trip fare plus 18, service fee plus two, right? Then there is another order consists of two entries. Tip, I don't know, you paid like, uh, let's say 10% 10, 10 or 15%, let's say you paid $5 tip, right? So that's minus five of the payer plus five to who? To the payee, which is the driver, right? And maybe this is a completely different account, who knows? Let, so that's another order. So we have two orders in the same job, which is the trip, and each order have multiple order entries. This is a beautiful architecture. This is a beautiful design. I love it, right? Anybody can understand this. You take this, you go back 30, 40 years, and you explain it to this anyone, anyone can understand it, right? Because it's beautiful, it doesn't have a fluff, it doesn't have, they don't, don't talk about Kafka, they don't talk about RabbitMQ, right? It's not ambiguous anymore. Right? It's all on the table. That's real engineering right there. That's real engineering. You can talk about tools, but explain to me how things work agnostically of these tools. Love you, Ober. Love it. I absolutely love it. Okay, so that's how you do it. So, so Hussein, we have jobs, we have order, we have order entree, we have order entrees. Who's going to execute this stuff? Look at this beautiful architecture. So you have weekly settlement scheduler, right? Something that, I don't know, uh, a scheduler that just settle money that never been paid. Just submitted an order. Oh, there's someone, oh, I forgot to pay this guy. I, I want to pay him a tip, but I I already reached home. Simple, go to your trip, pay tip. That will generate for the same job, the trip, a new order, which is to tip. Oh, I did. I really wanna uh, feed. Uh, I want. I want to get a, a refund. 
because I'm not satisfied of this. Uh, the Uber driver, I don't know. He was he was a little bit. Uh, he insulted me or something. I want I want a refund from Uber. Well, I don't know if they afford that. I, they give you this option, but hey, I want to su submit a refund. A refund is a completely third order in the same job, and they can treat it simply, agnostically, of everything else. So all of these orders. They give you like miscellaneous payment. I have no idea what miscellaneous payment means, really. Various jobs. Everything to them is just a an order in a job, right? That's the parent thing. Could be a trip, could be, I don't know, Uber Eats, something like that. But yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. And here's the thing. There is something called the order insertion service. What does it do? It inserts an order. And that's it. That's the only job for this service. Is it a microservice? Who cares about microservices? It's a beautiful design. You don't have to use microservices for everything, right? Let's just not blow everything out of proportion. I believe they are a microservices shop over. I might be wrong, though. Okay, so you submit this order to the order insertion service. And then the order instruction surface writes it to the database. That's it. And says, done. I'm right. I'm writing the order. Does it mean the order has been processed? Absolutely not. It just guarantees that I have submitted your order and asynchronously on the back end, we're going to execute it. So the act of submission, submission, the act of submitting the order is synchronous. But the execution of the order, that act is asynchronous. Because, hey, someone's going to process the order. That's where the beautiful, beautiful, tremendous, tremendous message queue. We have a tremendous, beautiful message queue right here. And we're going to be very beautiful, beautiful message queue. So this is a messaging queue that, that, is, that is where the things goes to. These are the orders. So now there is a third piece where picks up the order, process the order, and then says, I'm done. Almost like a pub sub if you think about it, right? It's more like, uh, I think it's, it, they don't explain this, but I believe the queue is being consumed by multiple ones, right? Here's an example. So there is the queue order writer reader. There is a service that consumes the queue from the order. And there is an, another service that processes the queue and, and, and the order. And that also picks from the queue. That tells me that the order is being consumed by multiple consumers. Thus, it's a pop sub system, I think. Because that's a, that's a pop, pop sub system, right? You have multiple subscribers subscribing, consuming a single system. And the same order can be consumed by multiple one. A queue is once you pop that order, it's gone. Now I still don't know what's going on here. So, so this is uh, it's going to be interesting to understand how they are working with this. Is it a single thing? Once you pop the order, it's done. You bet you should not be able to execute the same order twice. That's just bad. So I believe it's just a queue. Maybe I'm wrong. Right? So that, that guarantees us that once it's popped, right, it should be gone from the queue. But when it comes to that, there's where they're going to talk about the high availability. They're going to talk about item potency, which is I absolutely love this. All right. So, guys, let's talk about, let's talk about high availability. Services exchange order messages on looseless messaging queuing system clusters that are available in multiple regions. We have multi standby cross-region consumer instances in our deployment pool. If one region goes down, service instances in other regions can still consume and process order messages. So that tells me this messaging queue is, is a distributed, which is Kafka is, RabbitMQ is, uh, ZeroMQ is, but if only if you write it, so it is, I think. But, but yeah, you can definitely design a message so, so it's uh, distributed. So it can be consumed from multiple places. Our system persists the payment account and balance data and storage system that multiple zone quorum. Okay, the quorum here 
uh, emphasizes my point where if you write it to one place, it will be written to all other places. And if you consume it from one place, it better be consumed. It, that knowledge better be transferred to other uh, places as well. Well, as long as... Because uh, I don't think you're going to execute submit an order in, in Atlanta, for example, and consume it in Malaysia, right? Uh, that would be weird. So I think it's, it's there is a region-based ordering system that they don't talk about here. And I understand. It's, just, it's, it's a little bit complex to talk about all that stuff. Item potency, and I talked about item potency in my channel, guys, which is the idea of having to... If I submit the order, uh, uh, something twice, it's going to be counted as one, as one, right? I can as much as possible read or write and it's not going to change the state on the back end and how do they achieve this exactly exactly how kafka does it this is this is basically uniquely identifying your request because you need exactly once guarantee and they guarantee that why do you need exactly once because if you sub process the order twice you just lost twice the money <laughs> that's just bad right if there's money involved you better have exactly once guarantee. If you're building an, an uh, I don't know, a system that counts your Instagram likes, who cares <laughs> if you process it twice, right? It's just you're going to get an extra like. It's going to be 1.8 million likes anyway. It's not like someone is counting the likes, right? So yeah, sometimes you can live with it. Sometimes you don't. Yeah, so the money movement is based on order processing that ad atomically alter user payment account. Atomically, this is the key, atomically, right? Because you need atomicity here at that order entry level. And then I bet they have a state associated with the order that tells you if this order is processed, half processed, or completely processed. They don't mention this, but I believe they do, of course. Otherwise, how do you know if this order failed or order succeeds, right? And the item potency is guaranteed by every user, every job, every order every order entry has a unique identifier so if you accidentally submitted the order twice yeah we're gonna fail we're gonna say hey that's the second one we're gonna just ignore it right because that's our importance not necessarily fail just we don't we're not gonna hurt the back end right beautiful that's how they do uh this thing data consistency between asynchronous platform so here they goes about they go about migrating from their old system to the new system which is absolutely painful i it took them two years to do this stuff imagine that you have two systems and you have to guarantee that you write to this system and you also write to this system both systems should stay up and running and any right you do write to this you have to write it back to the other one and they explain this here they use the idea of versioning so they can uh, identify where this call came from did it came from this system or this the, the and or this system and based on that they can track the, the where where every order is and they guarantee consistency that's very 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 critical so they talk about all that stuff they have obviously dashboards and metrics that's what i'm interested in uh, the rest of the stuff i'm not really interested in so i didn't read through uh, i didn't i'm not gonna explain all these details but they had they talk about validation and retries this is important Every 24 hours, they execute these asynchronous jobs and it goes and see, okay, are there any orders that didn't be fulfilled? Let's pick up the order, re-execute it again, make sure everything actually succeeds. Once it succeeds, we're going to complete the rest of the stuff, right? Saga with microservices, if one of these pieces, operations failed, they, they give you the ability to roll back in Saga where you can just do a compensating uh, operations to roll back the stuff. I don't believe that's what they do. They do a retry. So that means, let's say you debited the payment account successfully, but you failed to accredit the payee account. Is that right? Payment. Yeah. So the, you failed to, to credit the other account. You've debited the account minus $100, but you failed to... to to, to credit the other account. What do you do? 
do you roll back? You can't just take the money back. That's just weird, right? Just tell the money, hey, you guys, hey, Bank of America, we just paid, actually took the money, but we want it actually, um, we want to actually uh, put it back now. That's just, that will be weird. No, no system supports this, right? <laughs> Especially when dealing with multiple accounts, right? If you own everything, you can do it probably in a single database, right? <laughs> but you don't own everything, right? These are external systems. So you have to work with them. So once that account has been debited, the account to credit fail, you have to start saving the state that, okay, I'm half done. <laughs> I don't know. And then you retry the credit again, right? And that's where the asynchronous system does. I think that's, believe me, or I think that's what they are doing, right? So yeah, it's a, it's a, they are learned a lot of lessons, obviously, especially through the migration from old to, to the new system. I do not envy them. This, this is going to be painful. Obviously, it is painful. Uh, the project took two years, cross-team effort, 40 engineers, product managers, all of that stuff. I would not be surprised. This is a big, big, big project, right? So that sucks that no comments. This is a great article, right? And uh, one of the best of the articles that I'm going to cover, hopefully, is this. Why Uber engineering switched from Postgres to MySQL. I talked about it many, many times on the channel, but I didn't actually cover that. It's a two, 2016 news, but it's a great, great uh, use case to discuss, right? Doesn't mean they're right moving from Postgres to MySQL. It's just fun to discuss. All right, guys, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, discussion of the software news. Uh, subscribe if you want um, back in engineering news, back in engineering discussion. Uh, that's what I discuss in this channel. I have I cover database engineering. I cover proxies, reverse proxies, data consistencies like this, uh, systems, back in systems. That's my specialty. I talk about this. And uh, if you have another article that you want me to cover, send it my way. This is my Twitter. Uh, handle right here please send it my way i'd love to cover these interesting articles i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome make sure to subscribe like this video guys see you in the next one goodbye